Turn with me to the book. Uh, let's go back to a read the text. I think I'll switch it up here. Go back to Hebrews 12. Yeah. I'm already there. You there? All right. I'm going to go ahead and start reading Hebrews 12 verse one. Uh, yeah, somebody's there. The old days, they said, that's what used to drive the devil crazy and heard pages turning, you know, uh, who I forget what preacher pastor Barkley just mentioned. They said, there's two sounds. It might, it might've been, uh, it was either lesser summer. He said, there's two sounds. The devil hates people in church turning pages and the sound of checks coming out of checkbooks. He said, there's two sounds that the devil can't stand, uh, knowing they're going to support the kingdom and stay strong in the word. But here we go. Therefore, we also, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded, encompassed by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw aside, lay aside every weight and the sin which has so easily beset us or ensnare us, and let us run with endurance, patience, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy, say joy, that was set before him endured the cross, despising shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, there's something about, even through all of this, Jesus kept the joy. He endured. He endured. He kept the joy and that's what, that's how he continued to uh, obey the will of God for, for his life. And uh, so I want you to now go with me, go back to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I want to read another verse here. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, talking about lay aside every weight. If you got weight, you can't hardly move. Less weight, the less weight you have, the better you move. How many knows that? If somebody weighs you down, you can't hardly move. Now, verse 24, do you not know that those who run in a race all run? Those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize. So everyone's running, but only one's going to receive the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. So even though you may think in your mind, well, I know that person's faster than me. That person's more gifted than me. That person can do this. I can't do. No, run, run that you may win. Don't just put your time in. Don't put your time in. And you run that you may win. Kenny Gatlin preached a message here, and he shared this thing about NASCAR, and he called it starting park. That's what he said. And, and there's some people, in the, he said, in NASCAR that would just run a few, few laps to get some points, and they just park it. They didn't have any tensions to get caught up in wrecks or get caught up in, you know, winning. It was just style a little bit. And he says, Christians cannot be starting parks. You can't just start and then go park. You've got to run. You've got to run this race as if you're really going to win. You got to believe you're going to win. You got to believe that you're going to win. That movie Facing the Giants, that one boy, that one father had that son that was going to be the uh, field goal kicker and, and he kept missing it to the last one. Then he made that supernaturally. And the father said, it's as if, it's as if you believe you're going to miss it before you kick it. He said, I can't make it. No, it's all here. You got to believe you're going to win. You got to believe that God gave you the ability to win. So you got to lay aside anything that keeps you from running. You got to lay aside anything and everything that keeps you from participating in this. So he says, everybody runs, but one receives a price. And everyone who competes for the price is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. We do it uh, for something that's e eternal, not just something that's going to last, set on a shelf, that's going to that's going to uh, tarnish, that's going to be filled with dust. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. And what, what Paul is saying here, he's saying that I, I don't run as uncertain. I run with a purpose, and I don't fight as one beating the air. In essence, he said, I'm not a shadow boxer here. I'm not just, just throwing here and throwing there and throwing here and throwing there. He said, no, I am doing this with precision of my heart. The day that you're living in, you can't live life like a shadow boxer. 
This is not just, you know, you're going to open up and spray a, around somewhere hoping it hits something. No, he says, you got to be a marksman. You got to have precision about you. You got to run with purpose. You got to be able to run. You know, this mentality nowadays, it doesn't matter if we win or lose, we all get a prize. Oh, that is so weakened us. That last place gets the same prize as first place. And, uh, then, and, then, and then because no one achieves to win and no one is taught this is victory, this is defeat, that we're all just equal, it's messed up the whole ecosystem. Amen? It's messed everything up. I guarantee you when it comes March Madness, whoever stands on that last day as a champion, they're not going to say, well, everybody's champions. <laughs> Come on. Everybody's champions. When the Super Bowl took place, you know, a little over a month ago, whenever that was, when they, when, they end, when they ended the game, they didn't say, well, we felt sorry for the other team. We're just going to give you both Lombardi trophies. No. The other ones walked off their heads down while the confetti was falling on the champions. Now, the point is, you play to win. That's for corruptible things. That's things that will tarnish and f fade away. We, we're not playing for something that we put into a trophy box. We're not playing for something that goes into a trophy room. We're playing for, we're running for eternity. We're running for God. These, these are things that we're going to do. That means we're not going to allow weights and we're not going to allow things to deter us. That means when we're running, we're not going to be fooled by a sign that says detour when God says stay the path. So you got to get rid of the weights and the sin that so easily besets you. Now, there's a word that I was looking at, talking about the sin that so easily beset us. And, and uh, people's been, I've been coming up with this again, Shannon. Uh, people's been talking about it, that uh, temptation's been real in people's lives. And it always has been. Temptation's not a new thing. It's not a new a new design of the enemy and a new ploy of the enemy. It's something that's there. And I'm watching people get completely down and defeated because they've had a thought of temptation or something. And so I've told people recently that that temptation is not a sin. That's the enemy trying to get you into a sin. Temptation is not a sin until you yield to that, until you bring that temptation to pass. Somebody that came out of pornography, somebody came out of that, and they said, I've been set free, and different things, and all of a sudden, they see something, something sparks something in them, and they're tempted to pull that phone up. They're tempted to set up a different account. They're tempted to do that, and all of a sudden, the enemy gets on them and says, you backslider, you know you've done it, you've done messed it all up, but they've never hit the button at all to open it up. Well, that's just a temptation to bring sin. That's just temptation to bring sin. This is where you become an overcomer in your life and you say, I'm not going to do that. Temptation is not sin until you activate it. Jesus was tempted and tested in all points as we are according to the book of Hebrews. We have a high priest that's touched with the feelings of our infirmities for he's been tempted and tested in all points as we are yet without sin. Yet without sin, he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities, the feelings of our weaknesses. He knows. He walked here as man. Even though he was God, he walked here as man, yet without sin. So if the enemy's trying to defeat you and eat your proverbial lunch, so to speak, if he's trying to defeat you that way because these old thoughts has come back to your mind, you thought you have, you thought you have been, he's just trying to take you back out of your destiny now and try to make you go back through all of that stuff that God brought you out of. But if you stand strong and cast off every weight and you keep running that you may win, that temptation will fall by the side and you will reach your destiny. Amen. Temptation. Jesus, after fasted, he was carried up and it said he was tempted of the devil for 40 days. And afterwards, after he was hungry, knowing what it is, the enemy says, uh, after he'd been fasted 40 days, tell me it's not a temptation. Uh, uh, command these stones become bread. 
Tell me if you fast for 40 days. Tell me what you want to eat. You want to eat something. Command these stones to be made bread. Just because he was tempted to command for the stones to become bread, did he sin? No. No. Everything he did, he defeated it by what? The word of God. By every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He defeated it by every word. How are you going to beat it? By the word of God. Well, that brings me to another point. No word, no victory. Because your flesh is not strong enough to beat it. Your flesh is not strong enough to beat it. How you beat it is by the word of God. If you depend on your flesh being strong enough to beat it, you've already lost because you've already lost it in your mind. You cannot, your flesh is not strong enough to beat it. You've got to have an inner strength on the inside to beat this thing. So the day that we're li living in, let's cast away all the weight. It didn't say, it says the weight and the sin. So we're still dealing with weights uh, that are not even sins. These are things that try to slow you down. Of course, there are sins. Well, what's a sin, pastor? Well, according to a simple definition is, it's a violation of God's law, but if you want to get it in there, uh, he that knoweth to do right and don't do it, to him it's sin. That's some definitions that's there. But there's only, thing, there's only one thing worse than being in sin, and that is staying in sin. There's only thing worse than being wrong is staying wrong, right? You apply that to everything. So it's, people, people are never been perfect, as Pastor David said, people's been people as long as people's been people. Well, that is as deep as you're ever going to get in it. And uh, so the truth is, uh, the same people in the Old Testament has the same kind of thinking to people now. It's just that there's just different technologies that we deal with. There's three things that beat people, according from Genesis in the garden. The lust of the eye. The lust of the flesh and the pride of life. There's the three things. These are the only three things from the fall of Adam to the modern day man. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. There's, not a, there's nothing else you can't find. You can't keep coming up with more things. It said in these three things, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These are the three elements that beat men. It happened in the garden, and it happens all the way to, where are we at, 2021? That's what it got to do. So what we have to do is continue to walk in the fullness of God. But you're going to run that you may win. Now it says they that run a race is temperate in all things. Now temperate in all things, it means that, uh, that they, they keep a discipline in their body. There's a temperance. The fruit, one of the fruit of the spirit is temperance. It's, it's uh, one of the things you do is you're, you're temperate in all things. That means if somebody's training for the Olympics, they're not probably having donuts every morning for breakfast. Poor them. <laughs> they're not having, they're not eating a bunch of stuff. Why? Because they're training for what? To win. Now, that's on the natural side. But on the spirit side, you, you've, you've got to be able to stay strong. You've got to know what's going to keep you spiritual healthy and what's not going to keep you spiritual healthy. Everything is done in moderation here. It's, it's done in a moderation in, uh, that, that there's, there's uh, excess of anything is what hurts people. Uh, I, I, I told people, I don't care how spiritual somebody comes off to be. When I see something that's excessive, that becomes a driving force, that's when I get concerned. That's when I get concerned. Uh, because something is driving that. One thing about God, God gently leads. The enemy, the flesh, drives we even use the term, you drive me nuts. I've never heard anybody said, you lead me nuts. <laughs> Has God ever led you nuts? No. no. I'm not going to ask you the other question. I'm just asking for one example. <laughs> no. I've never heard anybody said, you just led me crazy. I've heard them say what? 
you have driven me crazy. I've never said, you have led me to drink. No, you have drove me to drink. So I'm telling you what, there's a difference between led and driven, amen? I tell people, I, I, I don't have a purpose-driven life. I have a purpose-led life. They which are the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God, amen? I've been driven before. I don't like being driven. I like being led. It's, the Bible said Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness, No, I like being led. You know what you're going to do? Live a life of peace. Live a life of being led. Be temperate. Be moderate in this walk with God. I, I, I love the aspects of God's people just walking with God. I've been saying this for weeks. Being spiritual without being weird. And you know what? Pastor Barkley said half a dozen times this meeting, people can walk with God and be spiritual without being weird. And I'm thinking, did you hear him say it? I'm thinking, oh, glory to God. The Spirit's speaking the same thing. No, you just walk with God. You just walk with God. You just walk with God. God, you walk with God. God talks with you. You talk with God. You walk with God. God shares you about your family and, and, and you walk with God. You don't have to be weird about it. God wants to lead his people. Amen. I, I don't have to stand at Walmart and God speaks to me, oh, yes, hallelujah. And they behind me want to know, what, what happened to you? No? No, you don't have to be that way to walk with God. Just walk with God, amen? Just walk with God. Just walk with God. Just walk with God. And let God show up big in your life. You know what God wants to do? God wants to show up big because he's concerned about your family. He's concerned about your family. And uh, the comfort that we have is that if something really is going to go crazy, God's going to put it in our heart so we can pray to stop it. God's going to put it in his heart and pray we can stop it. Now, I've told this story. Now, my kids are all fair game. So Brittany has heard this story. But one day, Brittany, when she was in elementary school, she got with some kids that had a different vocabulary than what she was raised with. Where's Josh? Where's Josh? She said, where's Josh? She, that uh, had a different vocabulary than what she was raised with. Well, she started adapting to that vocabulary. Am I right? Possibly. I'm not going to deny it or I'm not going to confess it. So she started adopting to that right there. And so uh, we got called to the school. Because it wasn't the vocabulary they were teaching in school. And so we got called into school. And, uh, and so uh, we dealt with this. And I'll never forget, I was living on Poplar Street there and, um, in Dayton. And uh, I just told her, I said, uh, what are you gonna, she said, what are you going to do, Daddy? I said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. And uh, so she called me. She just got out of school. And I said, is that the only time you did that? Yeah, yeah. But then I saw her and her cousins walking on the street in Brookville. In the spirit. In the spirit. I saw it in the spirit. Saw it in the, this is no joke. I saw it in the spirit. Am I joking? I saw it in the spirit. <laughs> and I just so happened to hear their conversation. And I said, Brittany, what about this time when you were walking with so-and-so in Brookville? And this is the words. Oh, my God, Daddy, what else did he show you? <laughs> I said, why don't you tell me? Because I didn't see nothing else. Why don't you tell me? I mean, this thing is ready to, but you know what? I never had to deal with that again. The enemy was out, is always out to mess with her kids. But God will show up even by the gifts of the spirit if he needs to, to help preserve it. Amen. Now, I didn't raise any perfect kid. You tried, thank you. I didn't raise any perfect kid, but the truth is, I thank God that they're still in church, you know what I mean? I thank God. Here's the point is, God can't deal with your heart and fix you if you don't stay with God. 
You can tell people they got a problem and they run from God, God has a hard time getting them fixed. But if you got issues, you can get fixed. You, if you got medical problems, if you're afraid to go to the doctor, he can't, what, help you. If you got spiritual problems, you run from the presence of God, he can't help you. So the truth is, being led of God is not just for preaching. Being led of God is not just for, is not just for ministry. It's for family. It's for family, amen? It's for family. Now, God didn't show me not, nothing else, but I wasn't gonna tell Brittany that I didn't see nothing else. And uh, what else did he show you? Why don't you just tell me? But anyway, thank God for the Holy Ghost, amen? Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Say, I am spirit led. I cast away all weights and any sin that will keep me from running my race. Say, I have a race to run. You have a race to run. And there's a prize to win. There's a prize to win.